day, Jamie Chapman for another episode of 3 Minute Histology. In today's video, we're going to continue our look at the male gonad, which is the testis. You can see it here. Um, this is actually a Haitian East stain section. So previously we had an overview of the testis structure uh, looking at the trichrome stain section. This is a Haitian and East stain section with many of the same features we saw. Um, but we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the finer detail of the testicular structure and the seminiferous tubule structure. And then in a different video, we'll have a look at identifying the cells within um, the seminiferous tubules and spermatogenesis. So let's start our three minutes. So once again, here we have the testis. Um, it's oval in shape. This is the anterior surface. This is the posterior surface. So here's the spermatic cord. This is a little glancing section through the epididymis, which sits on the posterior surface of the testis. And then we've got this thick, dense connective tissue coat on the outside. This is the tunica albuginea, this thick, dense connective tissue capsule. And then uh, beneath that, we have the tunica vasculosa, which is where the blood supply to the testis actually arises. And then we have a number of these tubules. These are actually the seminiferous tubules. And this is the site after puberty where spermatogenesis takes place, the formation of sperm. So meiosis in the males takes place within these tubules. So if we sort of zoom in a little bit, we can actually see uh, that we have these uh, structures which are ringed by this um, capsule around the outside of the seminiferous tubules or the wall of the seminiferous tubules. It's made up of a number of flattened um, muscular-like cells called myoid cells and they actually are contractile and they contract to help move the sperm through the seminiferous tubules here. Now in between the seminiferous tubules is the area of the testis known as the interstitial tissue of the testis and within there we find the interstitial endocrine cells or the Leydig cells. And these are the large cells here, very acidophilic staining because they have lots of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. They may appear relatively foamy because they have lipids and lipids get removed through processing and so these cells here the Leydig cells or the interstitial endocrine cells are responsible for the production of testosterone. So the testis has two main functions, the production of gametes in the form of spermatozoa and the production of sex hormones in the formation of uh, testosterone particularly. And so they, uh, the um, interstitial endocrine cells or the uh, Leydig cells sit outside the seminiferous tubules, um, have receptors for luteinizing hormone, binding luteinizing hormone stimulates them to produce androgens, uh, testosterone testosterone predominantly, and then that brings about the secondary sexual characteristics of males. So here we've got the seminiferous tubules, it sits on a basement membrane, and then uh, we've got a number of cells at various stages of meiosis, as well as um, somatic cells or uh, sustentacular cells, they're also known as sustenocytes, sus sustentocytes. I can't even say it. I like to call them nurse cells because I can't say you can see I can't say it. So those are nurse cells or also known as Sertoli cells. So Sertoli cells actually sort of uh, envelop the spermatozoa and help the sperm actually uh, progress through spermatogenesis. And they have receptors for follicle stimulating hormone FSH which stimulates spermatogenesis that causes them to produce uh, testicular fluid which helps to move the sperm through. Anyway, that's a very brief overview of the structure of the testis. Um, we'll focus more on the uh, rest of the structure of the testis uh, in later videos, and um, we'll um, see you then. Hooroo!